Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, attending this webinar. A big uh, warm welcome uh, to this. Uh, my name is Owen Dawson. Uh, I'm one of the curriculum managers for what we call EMFL, and that stands for English, Maths and Foundation Learning. Uh, this uh, obviously is a, uh, an area of the college uh, that affects and touches all areas of the college uh, from 16 to 18 year olds uh, right through to uh, adults, adult learners on, on a part time course. And today what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to be taking you through uh, exactly what we offer in terms of English and maths, but I will also be touching on uh, what we call foundation learning and I will give you some more information about that in case you're not sure uh, what that is. Uh, and at the end of the uh, presentation that I have to give you, um, excuse me, there will be an opportunity to ask any uh, questions and I'll do my best to to answer them. So yeah, so uh, let's let's go. So English Mass and Foundation Learning, it's run in various different ways uh, across the college, uh, the Collindale campus, which is where I'm based at, Southgate campus, of course, and the Street campus. But we also have uh, other uh, what we call satellite sites. Uh, for example, we work with Orenwood Football Club, uh, Edmonton Green. We have a presence. So, uh, and really, English and maths, particularly, uh, usually is available at most of these, if not all of these sites, in, in some form. So, what do we offer in terms of English, maths, and foundation learning? Well, the main maths first of all are GCSEs and functional skills. Now sometimes there's a bit of uh, vagueness uh, about functional skills in particular. I'm going to try and sort of illustrate the differences but obviously if, if you're not sure please at the end of this don't, don't hesitate to ask and I'll try and I'll try and clear that up for you. Um, the way it works is if you are a student uh, and you are under the age of 19 um, it's pretty straightforward. When you join uh, a main study program at the college. Uh, what will happen is, is that you will have your GCSE results, if you have any, uh, obviously inspected by your area. Uh, and then if you have achieved uh, a grade four minimum, grade, so grade four or higher uh, in GCSE English or GCSE maths or both, uh, what that basically means is, is that you do not uh, have to study uh, English and maths uh, as a part of your main study. Some people, they may have a grade four in one, but not the other. And the way it works is basically if you have a grade three uh, GCSE English or maths, uh, you are if effectively the rules are that you, you are obliged to study the GCSE that you have a grade three in uh, until you get it or until you turn 19, whichever is the sooner. Basically enrolled into uh, GCSE English and or GCSE Maths, depending on your grades, when you enroll for your main study program. Uh, I should also say that that also applies uh, to functional skills level two. It's the same deal as grade three. Uh, you will automatically be enrolled into those uh, GCSEs. Now, if you don't already hold grade three uh, or functional skills level two in English and or maths, what will happen is you will automatically be enrolled into functional skills. Now, functional skills, uh, it does sometimes confuse people. I'll, I'll try and make it, make it clearer. Functional skills is essentially the stepping stone uh, towards a GCSE grade four. Um, there is some uh, obviously debate about whether a functional skills level two, which is the highest functional skills level you can get, uh, whether that is the equivalent uh, to a GCSE grade four. Uh, the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, it very much depends on what you want to do uh, in your career. Um, but essentially, uh, I think the best way to, to think about it is that you know a GCSE, uh, in English and or maths uh, really uh, means that uh, you've achieved what you need to achieve. Uh, you don't need to do any any more. And that will set you on your way towards obviously further study or your career. Now, functional skills works at different levels, uh, starting from entry level, level one and level two. If you obviously can get to functional skills level two,
uh, it's still an excellent qualification to have. Um, but obviously, it then gives you the opportunity uh, to then go on to uh, a GCSE, uh, perhaps the following year, following academically, if you're an adult learner, then uh, a lot a lot of universities, a lot of employers now, I'm pleased to say, uh, will uh, accept functional skills level two as a satisfactory uh, substitute for having a G. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's really uh, re really how it works. Uh, but obviously we, we, we feel obviously that a, a GCSE uh, grade four or better or a functional skills level two, that's really what you need. And that's really what we will work towards trying to help you to, to get at the college. Now, I mentioned that uh, a lot of adult students uh, study with us. So obviously the 16 to 19 students in their full-time study program, so they will have their main subject that they will study, uh, but they will do English and maths, if applicable, uh, alongside that study program, and in fact, as, as part of it. So it'll either be GCSE or functional skills, kind of wrapped around uh, the main program, uh, whatever that is, is in. But adult students obviously uh, have uh, different needs have obviously different uh, you know sort of time pressures responsibilities this kind of thing so we're very proud at Barnet and Southgate College that we offer a great deal of flexibility uh, on when you can study um, now obviously we are in the middle of a, a, a pandemic uh, we've obviously had to respond and change to how we deliver these things traditionally uh, we would offer a whole range of functional skills and GCSE courses uh, in evening times, uh, Saturdays, which are very popular, Saturday mornings. Uh, but increasingly, we're also able to offer these courses uh, in the daytime as well. And again, that's across all three uh, main campuses. So it's really important that we do offer that to our community and to you. Uh, obviously, without you guys, we, we don't have a college. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're helping you, you know, be the best that you can possibly be. You know, and the fact is, is that most careers uh, and career pathways, at some point, you are going to need a strong English and maths qualification in order to access those jobs and those employment opportunities and of course higher education. So I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to sort of downplay uh, how important the part-time adult English and maths is really big part of what we do. So that's uh, English and maths uh, in a nutshell. I will make one little note on that. Uh, we do often get people who are a bit puzzled uh, as to what the difference is between English and ESOL, uh, a completely separate thing. That's for English for speakers of other languages. It's not directly such a maths uh, uh, deal in. Um, but ESOL uh, level two qualification, that usually gives you a sort of passport straight through uh, to functional skills. For anybody who wishes to attempt it, uh, if you already have a, an existing GCSE grade three or grade D in English and maths and you have an ESOL level two, you can still uh, apply for GCSEs in the subjects that you wanted. And obviously, if you pass that assessment, then you're very welcome to come and join us on a GCSE um, program. If you don't pass it, it's not a massive issue. Uh, it just means that you're not quite ready for GCSE and we will automatically offer you a place in one of our functional skills uh, courses for the year. Uh, with a view to you hopefully uh, getting that all important uh, level two uh, and then being able to move straight on to GCSE the following year. So uh, you can't always have it exactly when you want to. For some people, it will be a, a journey. Uh, it will be a pathway. We have got students here who come straight in, uh, get their GCSE in the first year and, and that's fine. But we have students here who understand that it can be a, a long game sometimes. And we have students here who uh, do a sort of more gradual uh, progression towards those functional skills level two or GCSE uh, qualifications that can take one, two, you know, sometimes maybe even three years. Uh, but we we feel that, you know, we're there to support you in every step of the way and you'll always be given a fair chance and you'll always be um, given the the subject at the level uh, that you can show that you are capable of. We, we don't hold people back. We're all about uh, moving you forward and encouraging you to reach what you need to reach. So that's English and maths. Now, um, a word on foundation learning. Now, foundation learning, um, you know, means different things to different people. But here at Barnet and Southgate, 
college. Uh, essentially, uh, it's really designed primarily for the 19 year olds, I should say, who, for whatever reason, uh, have not been able to achieve uh, the standard five good GCSE passes uh, at school. Now, there are many reasons for that. We know that the government obviously uh, says and, and expects uh, all students to, uh, you know, to, to in England and Wales, four or better. That's that's kind of the gold standard. But the fact is, we recognise that actually that doesn't always happen, and there are 101 different reasons why that doesn't happen. Um, and it's you know it's a combination of factors. You know, uh, it can often be that uh, students uh, were were just had a bad day in the exams and they they crashed in the exams. That 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 happens. Uh, it could be the illness uh, or injury uh, disrupted learning. Uh, other things going on in people's lives. You know, we're, you're, you're human beings, not machines, after all. Um, or it could simply be that you haven't been in the UK very long anyway. You don't have any qualifications, uh, so therefore you can't really. Uh, be expected to have five GCSEs if you never studied them. And of course, that's where our foundation learning study programs come in. So they're in 16 to 19 year olds, they find themselves without the minimum five GCSEs in set. Obviously, the GCSE results don't define you, but obviously, you do need them to move on. And that's really where we're here to help. So we have two main foundation learning programs. The first one is the Bridge Southgate Campus. Uh, and what we do with those is we give you a, a, a qualification called BTEC Level 1 Vocational Studies. Uh, and alongside that, just like any other study program, you will then do the appropriate GCSE or functional skills, maths and English. We call it bridging quite simply because we're building a bridge from where you are, which is let's face it, not a great position to be in uh, at sort of 16, 17, where you don't have any or you don't have enough GCSEs. We build that bridge for you with your help to where you want to be. So the idea is you study the English and maths, you study the level one vocational studies, you attend, you attend on time, you do your best. Uh, and then we're in a position then to be able to launch you on the following year to a study program, of course, that you really want to do uh, and hopefully remove uh, those barriers for you and set you on your way. Uh, we have a very long and very proud history uh, with foundation learning students of turning their lives around, turning their education around. Uh, and it's something that we're really proud of. And if it's something that you need, we, we are here for you. We are aware, obviously, that uh, certain students will require certain extra specialist learning support. Uh, we work very, very closely with our in foundation learning. Uh, there is a specific course run at Southgate campus for students who have difficulties, uh, EHCP, educational health and care plans, although I stress uh, that uh, education, health care plan students can find themselves in any course. It's not, not just a foundation learning thing. Uh, but we have a course called Move Up, uh, which is very, very closely supported in smaller groups with, uh, I suppose, much more uh, visible in-class and out-of-class support for, for that profile of students. And lastly, for foundation learning, um, obviously what happens is, in the ideal world, Everyone starts uh, in September and they, they, you know, they happily study through uh, through the whole year to sort of the end. They come out with their qualifications, their GCSEs, their functional skills, their BTECs, uh, and everything's great. Um, but obviously, that's not always the case for every student. So every year, uh, what we do is round about uh, round about sort of mid November. Uh, we start these, uh, you know, various stakeholders, various partners that we have, and we find out uh, uh, if we have any 16 to 19 year olds who, for whatever reason, in sort of November, December, still do not have a school, college or training place. And we invite them uh, to join our back on track courses. Now, back on track is essentially the same as bridging, but it's condensed. I call it sort of diet bridging or bridging light. Uh, you start in January uh, and you finish at the end of June. Exactly the same principle. Uh, it's just a bit more compressed uh, into a shorter time frame, but it's the BTEC 
the one vocational studies, which is a mix of sort of bit of uh, units in creative, media, ICT, business, personal, social, that all important English and maths uh, element of it. And it's the same deal. Uh, you you attend that, you, you put the work in, supported by a personal tutor, as all our foundation learning courses are. Uh, and then you enable us through your hard work and your diligence and your good attitude. Uh, you will then enable us to then launch you onto uh, a successful higher level program of study the following year. And really, that can be anything you want. Uh, the college really has a fantastically wide and varied offer. So if it's ICT, health and social care, sports, um, science, you know, well, you know, construction, hair, beauty, anything really, um, you know, that that we do, we can move you onto that. Uh, you know, as, as a result of your foundation learning course going back to uh, GCSEs uh, for for uh, part-time adults and 16 to 18 students um, we are really we've got a really good team because we're really happy because we think we do really well um, the fact is uh, the qualifications are grade four to nine uh, we get these results at a higher rate than pretty much nearly all the London colleges uh, at the moment. So uh, it's obviously something that we're really proud of and it obviously shows that we have a team uh, in English and maths that really works out of you. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we're really happy that we're able to launch people onto those, onto their careers with, with, with these qualifications. Uh, we work with uh, Pearson edXL uh, for all of our English and maths qualifications. Uh, the main reason we work with Pearson edXL is simply because they are a fantastic example to work with, uh, very helpful. Uh, but most importantly to you, as an English and math student, you get access, or we get access, to a fantastically great range of resources to help students. Uh, we can see students past marked exam papers, uh, new resources come out very, very frequently, new ways of doing things, new ways of delivering. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, uh, what with the COVID pandemic, uh, we, we have had to change the way we do. We feel that we have, uh, we, we, we've got a, quite a bit of experience in this now. Uh, and we use a combination of online uh, and traditional classroom teaching. So, for example, uh, the way we're kind of doing it at the moment is that, um, well, I say that before the, the new lockdown happened, but uh, obviously, hopefully we'll, we'll come out of that. So, we're able to offer uh, remote online learning mixed with in-person traditional classroom teaching. Uh, obviously, we started doing this in March because we, we had to, but actually, uh, we have found that this conversation works really, really well. And the feedback from students is that they very much enjoy and appreciate the this approach, I suppose it gives you a little bit more freedom and flexibility. More and more people are expecting uh, to use uh, information technology in the past. Uh, and it seems to be, as far as we, we can see, it, uh, to be going very well. And you can see here some of our resources that we use are BKSB. Uh, this is really important. SB, this is a, a study platform uh, which uh, is able to assess you uh, and to test your skills and improve your skills in English and maths. Maths Watch uh, is another program we use which is really really popular uh, with students. It's games, it's tests, it's quizzes, uh, new ways of looking at things in, in, in terms of maths, hopefully making maths uh, enjoyable. Uh, obviously, you know, we do use a lot of video based resources on, on YouTube. Um, My Maths, again, uh, another resource that's very similar to Maths Watch, uh, the internal college uh, system where we're able to set tasks and you can submit work. Uh, all of this is, is uh, supported by obviously your teachers, your personal tutors, uh, and also if you do need extra support as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we have a really great uh, additional learning support team who can offer uh, in-class and out-of-class support. I mean, coaches who can give you one-to-one -one appointments during the week, uh, either remotely or in person, uh, and they will give you that little bit extra trouble with a particular uh, unit in English and maths, uh, or you just want to brush up a little bit. You just want to delve a little deeper into a particular, into a particular topic. 
And as we approach exam time, which traditionally obviously is around about the Easter, April, roughly April time, uh, we then put on uh, a mix of revision sessions, uh, which can be in person, but also online. So they can be done as a whole group of people attending a, an online seminar, uh, much as you might do at university, or it can be more sort of intimate, more, uh, you know, small group, group work uh, outside of your main uh, lesson time, just to sharpen up and brush up on those revision resources. A few frequently asked questions, I'm sure there are many more. Um, about functional skills, I touched on this earlier. Will will functional skills qualifications help me progress to higher study employment? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, functional skills have been around for quite a long time now. Um, and it is true that in the past, uh, it took a while to get get the recognition they should have. I'm pleased to say that now we're in a position where most employers, uh, colleges and universities, will, will recognise these qualifications. Uh, level two is really what you should aim for. Uh, universities will usually accept functional skills at level two instead of GCSE. But the little, the little always should check uh, as an adult, what your chosen university is asking you to have courses here. We don't want, you know, we don't want there to be any any confusion. But obviously, um, you know, to uh, want to go into things like nursing, uh, social work, uh, teaching assistants uh, is a really popular university, including, I believe, Middlesex uh, will now accept functional skills level two instead of a GCSE uh, in English and maths to join their degree programs. Uh, uh, foundation learning uh, study programs, are they only for students who need extra support? No, not at all. The profile of the students who take these programs. Uh, a lot of students fall into the, unfortunately, fall into the trap where they don't quite get the five GCSEs, they get three or four, uh, but unfortunately, they're then, <coughs> excuse me, they're then sort of roadblocked from going on to what they want to do because they don't have the, the magic five. So it needs to be seen as a, a stepping stone for progression. Like I said, uh, it's a bridge. You build a bridge across that river to where you want to be. Uh, we make sure uh, that we have a absolutely excellent uh, tutorial and learning support available for all foundation learning students. We like to think that we look after our students on, on their journey, you know, especially when they've been knocked back a little bit if they haven't quite had the GCSE results uh, that uh, they, they, they were expecting or that they, they needed. And can any adult enroll into GCSE English or Maths? Well, as I said earlier, if you are an adult learner uh, and you want to study GCSEs, uh, there's really two routes through. If you have a GCSE grade three or grade D, uh, as it used to be, you can show evidence of that. So you just pop along and apply uh, to, to the interview. You show us your certificate or your result statements. Doesn't matter how long ago you got it. Uh, and we with the GCSE or GCSEs that you want. Uh, the same goes for a level two functional skills uh, certificate in English and maths that will entitle you to go straight into GCSEs. If you don't have these qualifications, as I said earlier, uh, then we have a, a GCS, GCSE assessments uh, ready for you uh, that you uh, can then sit and then hopefully pass. Um, Obviously, we don't just sort of let you turn up and sit just to help you get ready for that assessment to give you the, the best chance of passing. But even then, even if you don't pass the GCSE assessment, like I said earlier, it doesn't really uh, mean a whole lot. It simply means you're not quite ready for it. OK, fine. Well, we will help you get there. And the way we do that is by offering you automatically places in our functional skills programs. And that will hopefully get you to the GCSE. So uh, further questions, I'm just displaying on, on the screen there, uh, the three, three people, including me, who are your points of contact for any further information. I will take some question and answers uh, in a moment uh, over the, over the, 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 the Zoom. Um, but if you just want to make a note of that, uh, obviously, uh, you, you will know uh, which one of the three main campuses works best for you. Uh, people tend to obviously um, travel to the campus that is is nearest nearest them, uh, but obviously Southgate, uh, Peter Samaliak, and there's his email address there. Barnet uh, Wood Street campus, which is in High Barnet, not far from the uh, High Barnet Tube Station. That's uh, Marcus Clark, 
And again, email address is there. And the Collingdale campus, well, that, that that's me. Uh, so we sort of deal obviously with, you know, kind of roughly the Mill Hill, Edgware, Edgware Road, Brent, uh, Deansbrook, that, that that sort of area for, for Collingdale. But really, you know, it's, it's, it's your choice of whichever campus you wish to study at. Uh, but please, yeah, do do get in touch. Right, well, I hope that's uh, given you some, some information. Um, which hopefully will will uh, give you at least a starting point to start thinking about uh, you know the English and maths particularly and and the foundation learning. I think I'm now ready to take uh, some questions. Does it cost any money to do the course? That's something I should have told you. No, it does not. In virtually all cases, the agencies they will fund you for this. Uh, their view is that obviously you need to have CSE or functional skills level two qualification in English and maths, so you don't have to pay for it. Uh, the only scenario where you might have to pay for it would be if you came to us with a with a GCSE grade four or higher. Um, in which case, yes, we would uh, have to charge a fee, but then. You know, um, that's incredibly rare. Uh, I've been doing this many, many years. I can only think of a couple of instances of that. So in nearly all cases, you will not have to pay to any of these courses. Do you do courses for the exams of the A2, please? Uh, I think by A2, you mean, uh, right. Well, the college does offer a really good A-level program, but that's not my uh, that's not actually my department. That would be the A-level uh, department that you would need to, to to get in touch with about that. Uh, I'm afraid, so I'm afraid I can't be too specific on that. But if you do uh, contact the college, uh, get in touch with the A-level uh, department, that they would be able to give you further details on that. that. Um, but yeah, I know it can be a bit confusing, but we, we, we concentrate GCSE and functional skills, A-level, uh, ASA2. They are a different thing. Uh, adult learners, can we start GCSE Maths and English on J in January 2021? Uh, the answer to that, I'm afraid, is no. Uh, we don't uh, offer GCSE, late start GCSE programs. Um, reason for that is what you've got to remember is GCSEs in schools are, um, they're taught over two years. So they're taught from age 14 to 16. So what we're already doing is we are condensing down what is a two year GCSE course into one academic year. Uh, starts September, ends June. Um, so it, it's not something that we can really do. It's not really um, realistic to join a uh, start a GCSE. The maths and English course, uh, you know, it, that is no. Uh, next question uh, we have is is uh, studying functional skills maths at Southgate campus is wondering when the exams come um, oh sorry lost that sorry about this just lost that um, when exams come when do we do mock practice uh, functional skills exams yeah I mean that's that sounds like a current learner to me um, right so obviously um, the COVID situation has had an impact on this but I mean at the moment we have two exam windows for functional skills you usually sit your exams in march usually early march uh, and then there's another opportunity in sort of mid to late june uh, at the moment we're not changing that uh we we don't you know we think that works in terms of exam windows um but obviously you know all of this is, is subject to change to some extent in terms of the covid uh situation but we're certainly planning at the moment to have those March and June exam windows. You ask if you can have a reader. Uh, mock practices, uh, yeah, well, you do certain, you do assessments in English and Maths throughout the academic year through from roughly sort of November. You will do sort of September, November, uh, February and April. You'll do a number of assessments throughout the year. And yes, of course, if you uh, have particular needs uh, such as a reader, scribe, separate room, extra time, that sort of thing. Uh, yes, so that, that is available uh, if you can provide the evidence that you you you, you need to, to have that. We can arrange that and it, it, it's, it's very common that we have those arrangements in place. Okay, if I could just go up. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, yeah, as I said, um, when you apply for, for next year, uh, yeah, we can certainly have afternoon classes. They are particularly popular at the Wood Street campus, but we also offer them at Southgate and uh, Collindale. Um, so that's not a problem at all. When you come in to enrol, when, when you when you apply for a course, we'll then ask you to come and enrol and we'll have these conversations with you then. When, when would you like to study these courses? When is it going to fit around your life uh, as an adult student? You know, jobs, you know, families, children, all that kind of stuff. But we have a really good broad range of availability for courses uh, for, for our adult students. So that, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, a little shout out to Maths Watcher. Maths Watcher is really good. It's helping me a lot with my maths. I actually enjoy maths. The videos are really good on there. Yeah, can't add anything to that. We like Maths Watch too. Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh, several questions here. Uh, it's free. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, would you like afternoon classes, not morning? What days you have and what times? Well, I think I've, I've sort of answered that. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a range of uh, courses available in the daytime. Some some in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evenings, and some on Saturday mornings. But again, we would discuss that with you uh, one, one to one. Uh, we'll do at home at the college, the class. Um, not quite sure I understand that point. Um, but as I said, it's a mix. Uh, of learning, you know, um, and as I said, there's an increase in line. Uh, do you have classes with only English? Uh, well, yes, you can study English or maths. Um, yeah, you, you can study English or maths uh, if you're an adult learner. If you're not an adult learner, by which I mean if you're 16 to 18 years old, uh, you have to study a full time study program. Uh, but if you're an adult learner, yes, if it's just English that you want, uh, then uh, that English is what you'll get. You don't have to do anything else. And do you need to do any exam before we start the course? Uh, no, I mean, for, for GCSE, as I said, if you want to join a GCSE course and you haven't got the the, the uh, entry requirements, then we will give you an assessment, uh, as I said. Uh, but obviously, what we'll also do, if you wish to join a functional skills class, what we do is we don't give you an exam, but we will give you an interview. We will give you what we call a level finder, an initial assessment, because then we'll be able to see uh, what level you are at in functional skills. I mean, it could be that you're already at level one or level two, and then we will find that out. Or it could be you got no idea what level you're at. Um, well, we will find that out for you. But I, I want to stress that's not an exam. Uh, that's that's just a, a, an assessment. You know, it's not a pass or a fail or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so any questions? Uh, I think I've lost my place a little bit. Here, so I'm just going to see if I can go from the bottom here. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I really want to make my English fluent. This thing keeps moving. Excuse me. I want to make my English fluent. Uh, sorry, this box keeps moving down. Sorry about this. I've lost it. All right, I'll come back to that. What functional skills can we start in January 2021? Um, right, the answer to that is uh, there is likely to be some uh, uh, functional skills classes starting in January, but obviously not as many. Uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, the late start functional skills classes are most likely to be at the Southgate campus. Uh, we don't really do them at Collindale, although we are looking at doing some late start functional skills uh, at, at Collindale. Uh, Wood Street, I don't think there are any um, late start ones, but Southgate. So if you, um, if you, if you saw the, uh, the contact details that I gave you, your, your man there is uh, Peter Simaliak uh, at the Southgate campus uh, for, for the late starters. OK. Uh, this course is only online. Uh, no, it's not only online. It's a mix uh, at the moment. COVID permitting, it is a mix of uh, online and in-person classes. Although I will say with the, the, the lockdown, which is about to happen this week for the next month, um, in a situation like that, yes, we do revert to online. But we, we think it's really important, particularly for adult students, uh, we think it's really important that you get as much as possible you get that face-to-face. -face. We do everything we can to offer you a really good mix. Let's see some more questions here. Uh, okay, uh, I want to be a level two. How can I apply? I need it needs to be free of charge. Well, as I said, it is free of charge. Yes, uh, you want to be level two. Okay, that's fine. That that's that's good. And that's ambitious. Uh, the deal is really if you can show uh, when you come to your interview uh, for assessment, if you will give you an assessment, if you can show you're at level two, then level two is what you will do. 
um, that's not a problem at all. But obviously, if you're not at level two, one of the things we're not going to do, we're not going to do something that is not in the student's best interest. So what we have to do and our responsibility is to make sure that we're putting you in at the right level. Now, the right level being very honest about it is not always necessarily the level that you want um, but we obviously we have a responsibility to act in your best interests so sure I mean if you can prove that you you can handle level two straight away not a problem we're not going to stand in your way uh, if it comes out that you're not quite ready for level two well that's fine uh, we will we will test you we will see where you are at and then we will be able to put you in the the appropriate level for you with a view to to working forward to getting that level two Okay, uh, I'll just go up a little bit more. Okay, I've completed ESOL level two at Barnet and Southgate College last year. Congratulations. Will I be able to follow GCSE English course on Saturdays? Um, okay, I mean, not automatically, no. Uh, an ESOL level two does not give you automatic entry um, to the GCSEs, particularly GCSE is great. Uh, it's a really good achievement um, to, to, to get that because I know it's not easy, uh, but there is quite a gap between ESOL level two. Um, in a situation like that, we would usually recommend that functional skills is kind of your stepping stone to the GCSE. However, all that said, um, we're not going to stop anybody from attempting the GCSE assessment. We're not going to stand in your way. All the questions. Ah, right. A few more questions here. Okay. How do we apply? Sorry. Again, I'm not used to this uh, this this moving box here. So uh, a few questions about how we apply for the course. Yeah. Uh, very simple. All your college uh, website. Uh, you choose the courses that you want to do. It will come under uh, part-time courses, uh, adult learning. Uh, and it's very simple. You just select the courses at the campus that you want to do. You put your application in. Uh, we will then obviously be in touch and we will arrange uh, interviews for you. Okay, so it, it's pretty pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, I do receive one-to-one -one support, but say for example, you did not pass my level two exam next year. Is there any way the college could help me for September 2021 to pass my exams for the following year after 2021? Um, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I suppose what you would have to do in that situation if you didn't pass your level two, um, then, you know, you, you would need to re-enroll for that level two course, the, the, the free support. Uh, quite a lot of people do that. And level two is, is, is pretty tough. I'm not going to, you know, dress it up. You know, level two is demanding. Uh, and that's why we find that a lot of our students are successful when they work through the levels, you know, over one or two years. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you don't quite, you know, pass level two the first time around, then, you know, we, we want to welcome you back uh, and we want to, we want to get you there. It just takes longer for some people than others. That's, that, that's, uh, that's natural. Okay. Um, to have an email address to apply for the course, it's very simple. Uh, uh, BarnettSouthgate.ac.uk. Uh, UK and all the information that you need to apply uh, is on there. Okay, let's go up through there. I was a returning student this year studying again. I was wondering, due to the lockdown happening with online sessions, say for example, I fell on maths exam, would you take me on again for another year in 2021 to reset my? Yes, absolutely. Look, the fact is, not everybody passes uh, the, the first time, and you know what? That that. That's fine. Now, some people have a longer journey. Um, we're not going to bar anyone. If you, you want to give it another go the following year, um, then, then of course we'll help you. Yeah, no, I mean, you are who we are here for. So, you know, we're not going to say, oh, you didn't pass, so we don't want you. No, never. We'll never say that. You are who we serve. You know, it's a fantastic community resource. Um, so, you know, by all means, come and have another, another crack at it. And I think in some ways it's actually kind of good you could look at it that way because you'll have all that experience of level two should hopefully be in a better position to pass it next time but you know stay, stay optimistic stay positive you've got good teachers you've got a good course um you know we, we will get you there in the end i'm sure okay um okay how can i enroll to the colondale campus uh yeah any campus uh college website application process it's there for you you pick the ones that you want to do okay 
And I think, I think that's all the questions and answers. Oh, here we go. Even though it is my third year next year, will you still accept me as it may take me a couple of years to pass, I think, due to lockdown? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. Again, we're not we're not going to put any barriers uh, to anyone. Uh, so we don't have to. Uh, as I keep saying, in a really short amount of time, some people will take a Take a lot longer. Um, you know, not not problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just one last one here. I did my GCSEs back in two thousand. I don't have any certification, and uh, no, I didn't too too well in maths. As I'm completely rubbish at it. I'm sure. I'm sure you're not really. Or with maths, people are often. I, I promise you this. When it comes to maths. Honestly, nine times out of 10, people know more than they think they do. It's surprising how much you retain. Uh, it's not a problem. Now, look, obviously, if you don't have evidence of the entry requirements uh, that we need, we do need to see that evidence. But if you cannot, um, if you cannot uh, provide the evidence, then you would have to sit uh, the GCSE uh, assessment uh, in, in that situation. OK. Right. OK, so uh, really, uh, I think we're kind of out of time now. Um, I hope that I've answered as many questions as as possible. Um, but obviously, what I'm going to just quickly do, what I, what I will suggest you do, I'm just going to put the PowerPoint back up. Um, excuse me. There we go. Right. So there you can see, you should be able to see uh, as I said, these these are the uh, the curriculum managers at each campus who you're very welcome to get in touch with uh, about this course. We can't ex obviously take every every question here uh, today, uh, but we would really really love to hear from you. Um, so Southgate, Peter Simaliak, Wood Street, Marcus Clark, Colin Dale, that that that's myself, Owen Dawson. We're all really nice and we're all really helpful and friendly most of the time anyway <laughs> not all of the time of course um you know this is what we do we want to hear from you we want to help you we want to help you get to where you want to be that's what barnet and southgate college does so don't have any hesitation in taking and maybe taking a photo or just scribbling down those email addresses now i'll just leave them up for a moment uh send us an email and, and we will we will get back to you tell okay Right. So I think that is all uh, from me. Uh, I just want to say a, a big thank you for taking the time and the trouble uh, to join this this webinar uh, today. Uh, we we love hearing from students. We you know I really enjoy doing these these kind of things because it means you know I can sort of speak directly uh, to you guys uh, who are you know our, our, our core business. Um, you know, and it's it's really great to be able to make that connection. And uh, yeah, I, I hope to hear from hope to hear from all of you uh, at some point, and we can get you enrolled, uh, get your applications in on the website, and let's uh, let's get you on track to success with English and maths and foundation learning. Okay.